What's up guys, it's Machanga back with another video. Today we're going to unbox and review the new Nvidia Shield TV Pro Edition. If you're thinking about upgrading from an older model, or if you're trying to decide between the Pro and Standard versions, this video just might help you out. In the box, you're going to find your new redesigned remote. Spoiler alert, while this remote is bigger than the previous touch remote, it has become my favorite update over the 2017 Shield TV that I've been using since it was released. You also get the Shield TV Pro itself, which is identical to the previous model, and I'll show you that later in this video. Under the plastic, you have your power brick, and finally, your usual documentation that includes a setup guide. With 3 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of storage, and the new Tegra X1 Plus processor, if you want a streaming powerhouse, this is the best Android TV option available. You can expand the storage with USB drives and external hard drives. This is especially important to those that want to install and play games or run a Plex server directly on the Shield TV Pro. You only get one micro SD card slot on the standard model. The new remote not only has more buttons that matter, but it's backlit this time. I normally have the lights turned off when I'm watching movies or TV in general, so I'm happy that Nvidia added this feature. This new Shield remote also comes with a lost remote locator built in, and you can now use AA batteries instead of having to recharge it. I don't run a Plex server on any of my Shield TVs, but if that's something you're interested in, the standard model isn't for you. The Pro Edition gives you two 3.0 USB ports if you like to store more content than the 16 gigs can handle. I typically alternate between a mini thumb drive and an external SSD. All of the devices I mentioned in this video will be linked below in the video description if you want more info and updated pricing. Both models include the Google Assistant and AI upscaling. The standard Shield TV looks nothing like the Pro Edition, so if you care about purchasing an Android TV box to showcase in your entertainment setup, you definitely want to pay the additional $50 for the Pro Edition. While we're talking about entertainment, I don't stream or use the internet without my VPN. Your privacy and security online are important, so if you don't currently use a VPN for all of your devices that are connected to the internet, check out the link below to the VPN that I use. I've used it for years and I can highly recommend it. If you've watched my channel for a while, then you probably already know I love my 2017 Nvidia Shield TV, and this new model looks exactly the same. If you have both, you might want to label them to keep from mixing them up like I did a few times during testing. Another notable difference between the Shield TV Pro and the standard model is the power adapter. The Pro Edition has a power brick, while the standard edition only needs a power cable. If you're short on space, this little hardware difference might tip the scale in your purchase decision. The previously released Shield TV stand from a couple of years ago will still work with this new Pro version if you already have one or if you plan to get a stand. You don't really need to worry about compatibility or if it'll fit. While I'm not a gamer, in our testing, gamer performance on the Shield TV Pro was great. There wasn't any lag, stuttering, or freezing. We played a few different games including several racing games and Fortnite. If you're interested in benchmarks, check out my standard Shield TV review in the card above and link below. While the Shield TV Pro no longer includes the Shield controller in the box like the previous model, you can still use that same controller if you already own one or if you're willing to purchase one separately. I'm not really sure why Nvidia decided to leave the Shield controller out this time, especially since you're shelling out $199.99 for the Shield TV Pro. You can play a select number of games with the remote, but most people won't be interested in doing that, myself included. You can also pair your Xbox One controllers and PS4 controllers without any issues. All of the functions and controls work seamlessly even when we alternate it back and forth between the Xbox One controller and the Shield controller that I've owned for a couple of years now. In my opinion, performance doing games didn't make me feel like it was a massive upgrade over the 2017 Shield TV, but it was as expected. With any brand new device, it'll always start out nice and snappy, so Make sure you subscribe for my long-term review when we revisit the overall performance and experience. If you already own or have used the previous Shield TV running the latest version of Android TV, which is Android 9.0, this user interface will look pretty familiar. One big upgrade to the new models is the addition of AI upscaling. This allows you to view older, lower resolution content with a bit more detail. Make sure when you turn it on in settings, you enable demo mode so you can see the slight changes in a side-by-side -side view. I'll show you a quick example on the screen using Netflix, but you'll enjoy it more if you use this software feature on a bigger screen than your cell phone. You have a few options for the amount of detail you want, 
low, medium, and high. I wasn't completely blown away, but your mileage may vary. I did purchase a standard model and a Pro Edition to replace my older Shield TVs. If you don't already have a 4K streaming device and you want the best of the best, I do recommend checking this one out. If you're intrigued by the AI upscaling and you feel like you're overdue for an upgrade, you won't find a better Android TV box on the market. This won't be your cheapest option, but I'll leave a link below to my Amazon page where you can stay up to date on the best prices. Don't forget to subscribe and make sure you tap the bell icon for all of my upcoming videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.